Hello and welcome back to the studio. Um, it's probably looking rather tatty from behind you, but I have tidied it up quite a bit. Um, so today I'm going to be doing an acrylic painting. I'm going to be using um, Winsor & Newton Galeria, which are fairly soft, but they're not quite as soft as System 3 um, or other really soft um acrylic paints. I'm going to be using a limited palette which I'll come to in a few minutes and I'm going to be painting one of my very favourite places um, on the Llyn Peninsula in wonderful North Wales. So without further ado let's get on with it. So here we are and this is a photograph of one of my favourite views um, in one of my favourite times of year, late summer. Um, this is a picture of a rifle. Um, the English call it the Rivals because it sounds vaguely similar. Um, but they are a little outcrop of mountains, very tail end of Snowdonia, um, which is over there. Um, and they're on the, um, just at the thick end of the Clin Peninsula. And this is taken from the Port of Scadian headland where I spent many, many summers over the last 20 years or so. It's a lovely, lovely place, especially when the weather's fine. So basically, that's the picture that I'm going to be painting. I'll lay it down and you can get lots of reflections from it. Um, and now I'm going to have a look at the palette. And there it is. Um, it's a limited palette and it's a very blue picture that it was. It's a blue late afternoon, early evening, just before sunset time. And to Here's the palette anyway. I've got titanium white, I've got cobalt blue, I've got powder blue. Now that comes in very handy for doing distances and for mixing into distant greens. I've got olive green, which I won't use as it stands, but I'll mix it with all the other colours. Lemon yellow, because most of the yellows are in the distance, so that's a greenier yellow. I've got burnt sienna as my red in the top row. I've got raw sienna, I've got raw umber, and I've got alizarin crimson over here. And on that side, I have... Um, Payne's Grey. Well, I was going to say black, but it's not black. It's Payne's Grey. And that's it. That's all the colours I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, counting the Payne's Grey and the white. Now, I'm going to put this into the corner of the screen up there. And you should be able to see what I'm mixing at the same time as I'm painting. See. Come on, there, there we go. So I'll get rid of the picture. Well, I'll put it over there where I can see it. And there's the picture there. There's the palette there. So, off we go. Without further ado, I shall welly in some sky. I'm using not very big brushes. I'm using what I've got out. Um, and that's probably the... No, that's the biggest one I've got out. So, I'll use that one. And I'll just welly in some sky. I'll mix up titanium white, cobalt blue. And 
well yet and I'm going to be doing this in a fairly rough and ready way. I've done absolutely no drawing because I know roughly where it's going to be. I'll take the sky down to about there and then it will come in with the greens and then the mountains will come up along there somewhere. So there we go. I'm painting on SAA acrylic practice paper, which don't let the name fool you. It's a very, very, very good surface. And it's archival. It lasts forever. It's good. It's very much the same as painting on linen canvas. I'm scruffing, scribbling the sky in because there's going to be lots of blues in there as well. Lots of whites in there. Putting a little bit more cobalt as I go up to the top. Keeping the brush rinsed out fairly well. And I, or I'm trying to remember to keep the brush rinsed out fairly well in between dips. Because that's the worst mistake you can make why well, not the worst it's a mistake you can make but with acrylics is using well with anything is picking up the um, the wrong color when you're mixing and using a dirty brush so keep your brush as clean as you can And try to keep your mixes fairly separate on your palette. The palette I'm using here is, I think it's Dale Rowney, can't remember, Stay Wet palette. And it's got a, I'll put it on the big camera. It's got a membrane there and underneath it's like blotting paper watercolour. And it keeps your colour soft, you put a lid on it when you finish. And it does keep them wet for a few days. The only snag is you have to be very careful to keep them flat and to make sure they don't get too wet because otherwise you then get your paints running about and there's manky bits all down the side where I've done that. Right, I'm going to go into my powder blue mix that into that colour and uh, it's a much less intense blue going down towards the horizon and even though this is a coastal scene the horizon isn't the sea it's actually the other side of the bay or oh, cove because that cove there is Porthos Clyde which is the next bay along from Porthos Gadden where we used to go camping wonderful there that when I was still teaching and Caroline and I were both teachers and we used to go there all summer and contrary to popular belief we spent most of the time sitting in this field 
in a tent to start with and then a caravan marking and preparing all our stuff for the next year it was magical times and then my parents got ill and um, we couldn't go for a few years the caravan fell apart and uh, now we've got a little camper and we'll be going back so who knows when i feel technologically secure i might even end up doing an online video while i'm actually out on a beach somewhere so don't hold your breath I'm trying to keep some movement in the sky by doing these crisscross dib dab brush strokes so it doesn't get too bland and uninteresting. It's drying very quickly because of the lights. I've got um, a couple of daylight bulbs in here and um, They create a lovely light for painting under, but they get very hot. One blue. Never mind, it's acrylic. You can welly it, anything across on top of it. So, there we go. That's the underpainting of the sky there now I want to put some clouds and stuff into it lots of titanium white I'm not using pure white because you very rarely see pure white that's being mixed on top of the blue so you'll always get some blue and this isn't completely dry I'm putting you can see it's very broken sky and I'm just scattering white bits of cloud about all over the place. It's always breezy on that coast. Well, almost always breezy on that coast. And the weather changes with the tide almost every day. I was out there in the van earlier this summer uh, it was pouring down with rain blowing a gale all day as soon as the time tide changed it was like this it was glorious managed to get the dogs out for a couple of hours i lead a very simple life you may have noticed dogs and painting and that's about it since i retired and boring housework of course see there how the paint has dried and i can use the texture of these brush strokes to show broken edges to the clouds Just put some more white into some of that. clouds going smaller as we head into the distance 
I'm going to put a little hint of these sideways on clouds as well. Do that. This is a tiny touch of Payne's Grey into that mix. And these are definitely wind blown. I don't want to look dark and threatening, just coming in from the side, quite far away. Now, I'm not doing a great deal of detail in the sky, I just want to give the impression of this sunny but windy afternoon. And that's basically Payne's Grey onto this white with a touch of the powder blue in just to blow up the grey. Breaking them up. And there. Sky done. Now, I'm going to get a rounder brush. Just notice the one I picked up is actually pure Kalinsky and I don't like using sable brushes with, um, with this. Now, I want to get the outline of your rifle white-ish and to do that I'm mixing a stronger blue and into that blue I'm going to put a touch of burnt sienna which will give it a grey purpley quality quality. And now it's got that little knobbly bit on the end and then a big triangle bit. then a saddle and a pointy bit another saddle smaller pointy bit And then that goes away into miles and miles of hinterland. Now, soften the hard bits there. don't want it to look too ominous because it's not there's going to be green green grass on there then we come this is a bit closer so I'm going to add some green to it because this is Munna's Nevin A 
and it goes up like that and then it falls off the end boink and you've got more lumpy bits heading off Away we go. Now that's the mountains, pretty much. Into that, I'm going to mix some white. Touch the lemon yellow. Touch the green. I should have a very peely wally green for doing the foothills at the bottom of the hills there. Scumbling that in. It's very rocky in the end bit. very simplified but we're nearly there I'm going to use this powder blue touch of the burnt sienna more powder blue a very pale lilac -y colour try a touch of alizarin into that because in that second saddle, oh, I've missed a pointy bit out. No, it's there. Tiny, very distant hill, which may or may not be snowed, and I can never be sure. Certainly one of the big Snowdonian mountains. If it's not Snowden, it's one of the the big ones. Just increase that little lumpy bit there. We've got one big, one big. And another fully off bit. That's a technical mountaineering term for the off bit. Right, okay, I'll leave that for now. And um, get on with doing the next bit which is all the green going across there. I don't want it too bright because it's miles away. Doesn't look miles away, but you try walking to get there. So I'm using the olive green, not on its own, putting in a tiny touch of the lemon yellow, tiny touch of the blue powder blue and that 
and sewing right the way across. I need to make a bit more of it. People will say to you sometimes, always check that you've made huge amounts of whatever colour it is you're mixing because you'll never be able to mix the same colour again. The odds are you will because you know what you put into it. It's like saying me mother could only get her scones right once. And she didn't. She got them right every single time. Um, but also it doesn't really matter because if you're painting a landscape or even a still life or a portrait, there are millions of colours in it. And it doesn't really matter if you get exactly the right one in exactly the right place. Now I'm putting a bit more green into this and a bit of the cobalt to darken it because this is where it comes down the cliffs and it's a bit more shadowier. The sun or the light is coming down that way so the flat bit of grass will be lighter than the bits that are going down. Now that's probably a bit too thick but it doesn't matter because it's acrylic so I can cover it all up. The beautiful thing about acrylics is you can paint light over dark almost immediately. Now I'm going to use a doodly doodly little brush because over there, I don't know if you can see on the picture, but there's trees and houses and things and all I want to do is put a slightly darker indication. Quite a bit of water into it. When I say quite a bit, I mean a brush tip full to thin it down because I want to fill this little brush with paint slightly darker and I'm going to put little bobbly bits along there which if you look close enough at the finished thing you might possibly think are trees but if nothing else they break up the join between the two bits, put some up there. Okay, now that is basically dry, I'm going to keep on with this little brush and mix some more of the yellow into that green. I'm going to put some sunny bits, not a bold boring line, but just some sunny bits. I've added some white to it there. There, and in a couple of places that comes down. Almost to the water's edge. Some 
more into that put some light bits going into the mountains just to add a bit of interest here and there now all along that there's a cliffy bit don't know if you can see it there's various coves not miles long that, but there's lots of little coves. I'm not going to get them all in exactly the right place. But I'm going to mix a dark colour with the burnt umber going into the blue. And give my paints a bit of a spritz. Make sure they stay damp a bit longer. So that's raw umber, cobalt blue, touch the green, tiny touch of this crimson just to warm it up a bit. And now I'm going to double in a line of cliffs over. the edge it's certainly not a straight line it goes up and down but I'm not trying to put the individual bays geographically correct if you see what I mean I'm just putting in cliffy bits that's a technical geological term. The cliffy bits come at the end of the flatty bits before the beachy bits. Now, I could say Oh, I've made a mistake, all that's in the wrong place. But it isn't, because it doesn't matter. Because it's um, it's acrylics, I can do what no I like with acrylics. I can paint anything over anything. So now, we've got grassy bits, cliffy bits. And I want some beachy bits. Raw sienna. White. Tiny touch of this powder blue. The powder blue comes in really handy for aerial perspective, no matter where you do it. Right, okay, I've got them. Now, I will use my savoury brush, but remind me I've got to wash it out afterwards. And I'm going to use the powder blue, mix it up on me rather dry and crumpled stay wash palette. really needs to be in contact with the under bit okay some of that some green to make a C color lots of white thicken it up a bit it's very runny and 
and it also needs to be strong enough to cover this greedy bit. Put a bit more white into that to make it a bit more opaque. Put a little tiny bit of thicker white in places just to put tiny bits of surf. I keep on saying this to anyone who will listen. Painting is 90% kidology. You put little bits of white and they're at the edge of the sea bit by the time you get to the beachy bit. So people think, oh, that's surf. It isn't. It's blobs of white paint. Right, okay. As I come forward, the sea gets bluer. And more intense in colour. So I'll put more colour into it. Still putting quite a lot of white because it's opaque but a little bit more of each of the colours every time I come forward. Bluer. I'm trying to leave some odd little bits of white in it for sparkle on the water. Blend that into the next bit going back. And it's a very calm, tranquil day down at ground level. The way I'm keeping these lines straight, by the way, is I put the weight on my hand and just let the top tip of the brush glide along the surface. In different stripes just to... Sea's never flat. It's 
always moving. I can and have sat and watched it for hours. <coughs> Pardon me there. Now we've got all that bit. There's a little, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little dot there, which is a speedboat. It shows you how far away it is. But anyway, I'm not going to bother with it. I might put a blob somewhere. Just put some more even stronger toned colour in the front bit here. Most of this will go behind the rock. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Digital art. Okay, now, hopefully, we've got some regression in that, or recession, not regression. We've got bright sky at the top, going to paler as we go further back. I'll probably put some more stuff in the sky afterwards. And hopefully, we've got this sea coming forward. Now, the foreground is all a bit samey so what i shall do i'll rearrange these rocks a bit more if you can see it there it's more or less a straight line so i shall use a bristle chisely brush that one and i'll slop in some darks that's a technical artistic term and i'll start off using that grey colour, notice that most of my mixes come out of other mixes, which is another reason why I say don't mix a huge pile of one colour, because you can reuse it. It gives the finished painting unity. And instead of putting a flat area of rock, I'm going to break it up a lot more, try to make it more interesting. Because this isn't a photograph. I don't need it to be exactly the same. I've already got the photograph. So this is my painting. It's got nothing to do with the reality. I want to get an interesting shape in the foreground, which has got some hints of the shape in the background. But it will have a lot stronger colours. You, I've been putting into this mix alizarin crimson, which is bright red, and that brings this forward a bit more. Now I want that bit to go further back so I'll use the other blue and the other red my darker ones go in front of that and I'll slope that off getting higher as we go across now this is three different colors and now I'm going to 
put light and shade into it. To do that, I'm going to use a softer bristle brush to get more of um, a spread. I'm putting the paint grey into that, warming it up with some alizarin. And the sun's coming from that sort of way. It's afternoon and I know the sun goes down that way. So I'm having afternoon sun. I'll change the light on the mountains a bit. But I'll put the darks coming in here. I'm mixing these very thick, very dark, just to give some shadow and some shape. Go back to my nice soft little brush, dry it off a bit. Now I want to put some sunshine onto those rocks. I'll use my raw sienna, some yellow, some white. And I'll probably put some of the blue in places, but now I'm just putting light onto some bits of it. Because I haven't let this dry in between, I can blend these colours quite easily and make different colours out of it. So it doesn't get too boring. getting into a sort of zone here so I've probably gone quiet but I'm trying to create a world of texture and almost an echo of what's going on over there
now uh, some warm shadowy colour start off with the alizarin put some of that dark into it and I've got a really rich purple colour now which I will overlay onto some of these shadow areas give it a hint of continuity that bit very dark knobbly bit I'll put some layery bit I'm just trying to make interesting shapes. Not too much detail. I just want it to seem as if it's real, not just blobs of paint. Even though it is just blobs of paint. If you can hear a clattering sound, it's my little doggy coming to see what I'm up to. Aren't you, Jess? Am I ignoring you too much? Tough. Just dobbling some bits, giving it a bit of texture. Now... complete invention that not complete I'm going to put some algae very yellowy algae in bits on these rocks using almost pure lemon yellow Just in bits here and there. Just to give it a little bit of interest. some whites. Ah, ah, no. Not having you eating my... Good job I looked. She was halfway through eating my apron. It serves me right. I should have been wearing it. Uh, put a little bit over here. More digital art. And now... Hopefully, 
the finishing touch to the front, if I mix up some alizarin crimson and some white, I'll put a bit more alizarin in bits a bit, and here. And I'll put some sea pink. I've got the yellow on that side. Now I'll put sea pinks on here. Some white dots into the wet pink. some darker bits on the shadowy side a bit of blue in there as well and underneath And just at the base of it, we'll put a few bits of leaves. A little bit of shadow underneath. I think I'll put a little clump down there as well. Because it is absolutely rife all the way along this, this coast. It's wonderful. You get these big craggy rocks and this beautiful, delicate sea pink growing seemingly out of nowhere. It's Nature never ceases to amaze me. I barely see those. So I think I'll put a patch here just to brighten up that very dark bit.
concerning Seba. It's more in shadow. whitey pink bits. I don't want to go mad with this, so somebody tell me when to stop. Now, because I've got the light coming in from that side there, I need to make a very peely wally light colour. Too wet. I'm just putting some little fiddly bit. Give some texture to the mountain. Right. Sort of echoes some of the pinks in the foreground. And on there, got the light coming all the way along there. Now, use my white, some other colours in it, and I'll just indicate a few blobs of buildings all along there. There's actually some fairly complicated farm buildings and stuff that you can see, but I just want to break that off. Put some darker bits as well. More of me tree bits along there to break that line up. Now, very, very nearly there now. I'm using a very manky broken brush. Bashing it into there. I just want to put some light bits here and there on the water just bits of sparkle and the same with the clouds So 
the light a bit where the light's hitting them. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I shall just take the paint off, not the paint, the tape. When you've got the paper taped down and you take the paper off, you take the tape off, always make sure that you don't do that, you pull it away from the paint so that if it does take the surface of the paper off it doesn't rip the paint off like it has there not too badly and take the top one off next This one, and there it has a pretty little border all the way around it, and there, a rifle from Porter Scabbing with sea pinks. Hope you like that. Just a little quick hour-long sketch and um, I'll see you next time.